Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CodeCast Podcast today. My name is Terry Fletcher. The CodeCast is also sponsored today by Citibank. City's mission is to serve as a trusted partner to clients by responsibly providing financial services that enable growth and economic progress. Their core activities are safeguarding assets, lending money, making payments, and accessing the capital markets on behalf of their clients, Citibank. So this week, since, you know, it's July, I know a lot of you are going to be on holiday for the 4th of July. I wanted to put in a topic that I don't know if many of you really are aware of, but I thought I'd I'd put it out there because a lot of people uh, tend to look at principal care management uh, incorrectly, or they're looking at care management codes collectively and don't realize that individual care management, like transitional care management, chronic care management, etc., are different than when you look at principal care management, which was given to us a couple of years ago. And what principal care management is, code CPT 992, I'm sorry, 99424, 99425 for additional 30 minutes, 99426 and 99427. What these codes are for is um, principal care management represents services that focus on the medical and or physiological needs manifested by a single complex chronic condition. And it's expected to last at least three months and includes establishing, implementing, revising, and monitoring a care plan specific to that single disease. So it is a time-based code, so 99424 would need at least 30 minutes. It also has specifics on who can provide the service. I know when you look at some of the chronic care management or transitional care management codes, they include some of the time that's dedicated to clinical staff responsibility. But when you're looking at these codes specifically, 99424 and 425, which is what I'm going to focus on, these codes are supposed to be for personal, I'm sorry, let me back up. These codes are for the time spent provided personally by the physician or other qualified healthcare professional per calendar month. Can they be virtual? Yes. Um, and that is part of care management is that you're, you're really focusing on that patient. Uh, that their one specific need that is just, I don't want to say out of control, but it, it here's the bullets under that code. It says one complex chronic condition expected to last again three months that places the patient at significant risk of hospitalization, acute exacerbation, decompensation, functional decline, or death. The condition requires a development, monitoring, and revision of disease-specific care plan, It also requires frequent adjustments in the medication regimen and or the management of the condition is usually complex due to the patient's comorbidities. And the reason I'm bringing this to your attention from verbatim from the CPT book is that that's what your documentation has to look like. The fourth bullet talks about also has to include ongoing communication and care coordination between relevant practitioners furnishing care. So what would this apply to? Well, consider that patient that's maybe a a, a severe asthmatic and they have these flare-ups, they're in and out of the hospital, especially during certain seasons, um, or they come into contact maybe with somebody's perfume or a scent or something that just sets off that, you know, respiratory attack and they can't breathe and they have to go to the hospital. Or even sometimes we're seeing now asthmatic uh, episodes because of something that was in the air they're allergic to. So an asthmatic, especially a severe one, a severe case, can really be life-threatening. Um, I mentioned somebody who has some kind of an allergy. They come in contact with peanuts or something that they didn't know was there. And all of a sudden, they don't have their EpiPen. They need some kind of Benadryl injection, and, and it's bad. And so you as a provider are really just focused on that principal problem. So that that chronic condition, and always go back to your definition of what a chronic condition is. According to the Centers for Disease Control, a chronic condition that it has a broad definition, but it's conditions that last at least one year or more and require ongoing medical attention, or it can limit activities of daily living Um, because or both because of the severity or the risk behaviors also chronic conditions you know such as heart disease cancer diabetes things like that 
Um, they are the leading causes of death and disability in the United States. But it's someone who's, I don't want to say out of control in their profile clinically. So, for example, okay, I last year was diagnosed with diabetes. Well, uh, it was terrible at the time, but then they got me medicine control. I now am, you know, below six for my A1C. And I know I'm oversharing here a little bit, but I'm trying to make a point. But now, you know, the doctor even said, technically, you probably could say you don't have diabetes, but I like to say you're managed because I do have to take metformin twice a day, but I'm not on insulin. They only had to do that for three months. And so, and I've, you know, lost about 80 pounds. So that has really helped. And so I would not qualify as somebody that would be in principal care management. But think of that person that isn't controlled under um, medication isn't hasn't changed their lifestyle hasn't changed their diet also has maybe some comorbidities of potential cancer or heart disease or you know um, excessive alcohol use or liver failure or something that is really contributing to the weakness in that chronic condition then that person possibly could qualify for this, you know, um, principal care management service that your physician is providing it once a month with. Now it has to be staff. It either has to be your physician is providing it or your qualified healthcare professionals, which are people and clinicians that can build directly to the payer without having to deal with physician supervision. So this isn't something your RN or your medical assistant, LVNs, LPNs, that this isn't something that clinical staff can do. And so, and remember, also don't pawn this off on a, on a pharmacist. I saw that recently and that money was taken back. Pharmacists can help as a care team on cr um, chronic care management, but not as far as this, because this is about the physician. Also, um, there's parent, parent, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm tongue tied today. Parenthetical guidelines <laughs> and direction in your CPT book. Again, I'm in on page 55 of CPT 2024 professional edition that says do not report these with uh, certain other services such as phone calls or um, the digital codes, the portal codes, um, such as uh, dealing with any kind of behavioral health stuff. They're saying, look, this is what you're focused on. You are focused on just the principal care management of this one complex chronic condition and I was setting up a allergist recently with this and you know she was like this is exactly what I do for my patients all allergy patients are so tough because you never know when that onset is going to happen I had a rheumatologist that said is this for me well what if you have those patients that have fibromyalgia that one chronic problem uh, maybe they've got long COVID maybe they've got you know, osteoporosis and something that's contributing to that, you know, attempt for pain management. And they actually end up in the ER because they can't tolerate the pain or the urgent care. And so the, the physician says, you know, I'm doing a lot of this virtual management of the patient, trying to keep them out of the hospital consistently. Um, this also is an interesting code and check your commercial plans because I could see this also in pediatric medicine that we don't have and some of the chronic care things only because some of the pediatric, you know, medicine, um, managed care services, it, it really, or I should say some of the pediatric patients don't qualify because it, it's so many comorbidities, so many things you're dealing with, chronic care, traditional care. But to me, primary care, you know, or principal care management, you can also have that one problem you're dealing with, with even a pediatric patient. So check their policy to see if these codes are covered. But always remember when you get into care management services, it means that you have the clinician, the, you know, MDDO or the NPP that understands the patient's clinical profile, their assessment, they have created that, um, you know, that's a disease specific care plan. They developed it, they're monitoring it, they're revising it. You would have to have, you know, a chart in their, um, in, in their paperwork that shows in their medical record that shows that frequent adjustments in the medication resume and in regimen. And it doesn't mean that you're adjusting or increasing. It means that you could be taking them off. You could just be monitoring, but adjustment could be, you're also checking to make sure what they're on currently hasn't built up a tolerance. And so, you know, also is there, it says usually complex comorbidities could be part of it. So whenever you, you see this code and the reason I even brought it up because I don't, talk about care management services probably near enough 
is because when I see it being applied incorrectly. So I saw a practice saying, we're going to build this code. Now when we do pre-ops for, you know, orthopedic surgery, I'm like, what? No, 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 that's a pre-op code. They're like, yeah, but the patient's got, you know, severe osteo osteoporitis. So we're going to do a, you know, total joint or something I'm like, no, 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 that's not what that's for. So you, you have to realize that you're, you're keeping the patient out of the hospital. You're managing something that's never going to go away for them. That is, you know, is causing them something that has to be managed on an ongoing basis, potentially in person and uh, virtually, not something that you're scheduling surgery for necessarily. So always be aware that it's it's not necessarily in conjunction with something else, but it is it is an independent service and you, you have to not mix up your codes and try to use it for something that it isn't. And I see that happening with all kinds of things lately and it's such a problem, so be careful. Also, I wanted to mention that the CPT editorial panel came out with uh, for second quarter some of the new codes that are coming in 2025. And just a reminder, we are going to have new telehealth codes. So you were not going to be able to use the E&M services anymore for audio and video and audio only codes. They're going to change in 2025. I'll be updating you as that comes a place, you know, it comes to pass because right now we just have placeholder codes with X's in them, but they keep reminding us. And so I'm sure that the reimbursement is going to change. The rules are going to change. And let's face it, we're in a political year, so who knows how things are going to change from a government perspective. But keep a look, keep an eye out on your commercial plans as well, because they're going to be able to do whatever they want to do. You know, all they have to do under the um, the different acts that we have out there, the task force, is they just have to offer it. They don't necessarily have to pay for it. They have to offer it. There's a difference. They can have their own panel physicians. Uh, most, I know the most of the big um, commercial plans have stopped paying for audio only. So that's just something I wanted to give you a heads up about that I'll be talking about later as we probably get into third quarter. So, and then just, you know, st try and stay cool out there, everyone. We, we're in kind of a heat wave right now. I know it's end of June, uh, beginning of July, and we just want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to stay hydrated. You make sure you're using your sunscreen, sunblock, and don't forget to spray your head. <laughs> I forget that sometimes. I hate hats, but I have to do that, especially because I'm in my pool so much, but spray your head. Don't, don't burn your scalp. And lastly, everyone have a great 4th of July holiday, and I hope you get to spend some time with friends and family. So, and try to limit your alcohol intake because alcohol and the sun and heat is a, a recipe for disaster, and I just don't want you to pass out or anything. Okay, everyone, make it a great day and a great rest of your week, and thank you for listening to the CodeCast podcast. For more information on medical coding, billing, auditing, and compliance, including how to hire Terry, Follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma. Music producer Assassin Music. <laughs>